So let's start by taking a look around the No Input tab. First of all, we have Input Devices. Now we had a brief look at this in the first video, that it's basically opening up one of the Sibelius preference panels. I can see my different input devices and the different devices I have connected to my computer. Settings for using MIDI guitar or MIDI bass. Various different input options. And the most important one, my test LED. So if I hit some keys on the keyboard, I can make sure I'm getting MIDI signal through to Sibelius. If this list wasn't being populated, I can just hit Find New Devices, and anything connected with the correct drivers installed will appear in this list. It's worth making sure that anything you want to use is checked, but other than that, this list pretty much populates itself. Hit OK, and we're back to the main screen. The next section is Note Input. Now, a lot of these features are much easier dealt with with keyboard shortcuts. For example, Input Notes, N. Letter N, set up my duration down here on the keypad. At this point, I can show you one of the many aids that Sibelius has when it comes to instrumentation and working out which part needs to go where. If I zoom in here, you can see that the first and third notes of this bar have been coloured dark red meaning that Sibelius believes these notes are only achievable by a more experienced player. If I go up even higher, you'll see that the note turns bright red, indicating that this note is not possible on this instrument. Next we have the triplet section. So, if I add a note, hit triplet, it now allows me to add more notes to create that triplet feel. So we end up with and if I complete that with two more notes you can now hear how the triplet goes together. Respell accidentals is particularly useful when you're transposing parts. Often if you're doing an enharmonic or even a harmonic transposition, the accidentals may not work out quite as they should. Respell accidentals allows us to do exactly that. In this case, it's going to add a lot more flats and sharps than it should do because obviously we're in a sharp key. But you can see exactly what it's done. Re-input pitches is a really useful feature when you're not quite sure where your tune is going. Let me select this track. First of all, I'll respell the accidentals. Now I'll re-input pitches. Select the first one. This now gives me a dotted carrot or carrier. So now as I type, I'm not changing the rhythm of my piece, just the pitch. Time for a really useful trick. Any notation I've selected, we already know that if I hold down the Alt key, I can copy into another part. And if I hold down Command and click downwards, I change down the octave. If I hit the letter R, I repeat the notation that I've just selected. So for example, if I repeat here, hit the letter R, we'll repeat onto the top part. Now if I want to, just using the up and down arrows, I can change those pitches. Again, I can do the same here. So now, hopefully, if we play back, so very quickly, I've started to create my own composition. Transpose allows me to move a bar or an entire section up and down by either a given key or a given interval. So let's go up major third and this is where respell accidentals can really come into its own I zoom in, that's correcting everything for where we are. 
Input pitches allows us to swap between adding notes at a sounding pitch or at the written pitch. At this point, beware. If you're adding at the sounding pitch in an untransposed score, when you go over to your parts, which are automatically going to transpose, it's all going to go horribly wrong and your intervals will be wrong. Generally, input at sounding pitch into a concert score. I'd just like to skip past flexi time and voices just for a moment and jump straight into intervals. Now this allows us to do exactly that. Either I can select an individual note and add an interval above, or an interval below. Or if I choose to, I can pick out a whole section and add an interval above. So now we play back. We're starting to add some harmony to our piece. However, there are keyboard shortcuts to make this job a lot easier. If I select some notes and hit the number 3 above the letter E on the QWERTY keyboard, that's not the number 3 on the keypad, I add an interval of a third above. If I hit 3 again, a third above that. If I select the next bar and hold down SHIFT and the number 3, I add an interval below. Hit the last one, hit the number 5, add a fifth above, hit it again, add another fifth above that. So now we end up with something which is possibly truly awful sounding. So it's very easy to add harmony to your instrumental compositions.